how does the SERS impact you and what relevance has it got to do with you this day, right? I mean, all of you are very interested in this. I mean, uh, we can talk about national statistics and this and that, right? But essentially, if we dwell into that, okay, what, what matters more to the common citizen is that how will this impact them? How will HDB policy impact, impact their daily lives, right? For example, this SERS policy, right? What does it mean for everyone? So one of the issues that, that, that are very important in Singapore, one of them is being having enough food on the table to eat, all right? This comes in the form of two things. One is food, I mean, and uh, food security, and as well as, uh, you know, ability to afford that food, as well as the second basic need is shelter, all right? These are two of the most essential human needs that you can't run away from, all right? So when, when, when these two things start to uh, get affected, right, Singaporeans start, start to get concerned, right? Why? Because when you don't have enough food on the table, the rest is nonsense, yes? You don't have a shelter when you come back to after work, right? That is also nonsense because you're either going to have to rent, find a place to sleep, or sleep in the streets, all right? That, that is it. That, that is what it means to have a shelter. So that is why in the early days, HDB have a policy, right? That says, okay, let's start building some public housing for people, right? That, uh, that your and my essential needs are met, yes or no? Okay, so that was a true mission of HDB in the early days, all right? The next thing that we must ask ourselves, all right, is, okay, is what has this SERS got to do with us, all right? So everyone has a, has a, has a so-called as a home, right? Agree? Everyone has a home right now where you're staying. If not, then uh, please flag out to us. We try to find you a new home, so and so forth, yeah? But I suppose everyone has a house that they can call a home. Okay, this is very important. If you have nothing to come back to, then what are you working for? Yes? So, I'm going to ignore the questions on, uh, you know, a bit more on the national level, but I'll focus on what it means to a common man, because my audience here today is a common man, yeah? And the common man wants to see food on the table and a house to stay. Very simple. And so, the question is, okay, so, oh, my house is good, my property value is growing up. Yes, I should feel appreciative and everybody should be happy. On the paper, you know, 600,000 becomes a mill. Wouldn't anyone be happy? Come, come. Tell me, would you be happy if you see your house $600,000 a mill? Anyone? Okay, happy. I see some happy knots here. Yeah, it's true, it's true. Any more happy knots? Okay, so on the surface, yes, you're right. Your monetary, has, uh, 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 so-called your monetary assets have gone up, right? That is true on paper, yes. But the question is, do most Singaporeans, like you and me, do most Singaporeans own one or two or more pro properties to stay in? Come, or able to stay in? Anyone got the answer? Do most Singaporeans own one, two or three properties? Come. One, right? Most own one, right? Unless you tell me you're a savvy investor, you pay uh, seller stamp duty or you know, uh, ADSD perhaps, you know, and, and pay all the stamp duties as well. Neither lah, yeah? Then okay, never mind, you're in the better of uh, strata, yeah, I agree. But as far as I know, most Singaporeans own one property. All right, so let's say your property value has increased, right? Okay, very happy, very happy. Then you've got to realize, hey, I sell this property, I'm very happy. But do I need to buy my next property? Do I need to buy my next property in an in a increasing property trend? Yes or no? Yes, right, unless you own two or more properties. If you're owning a single property, then the conclusion is that, hey, hello, brother, I pay one million here. Hey, then one go 1.4. I need to talk, let's say if I pay similar for similar and, and I go up one to 1.4, do I need to talk about 400,000 at the next stage? So the answer is, yes, you do. So what now? Is it actually, right, we live in Singapore, so we pay for housing in Singapore. Don't talk about Malaysia or what. If you want to go, then, you know, I can't stop you, right? But if you want to say, you stay in Singapore, you want to work in Singapore, your roots are in Singapore, your friends and families are in Singapore, you stay in one HDB, you sell off, you need to top up, okay, maybe two, three hundred thousand or four hundred thousand because of an increasing property trend that is out of your control. How, ah? Uh? Yeah, that's a very interesting question, ah. Uh. So this, this search or this rise in property trend, does it really benefit you, yeah? Because unless you have the financial capability to own two or more properties. Okay, I'm not giving a property talk here, seriously. I'm giving you the real thing that's hitting you in the back right now, right? The thing that's hitting you at home right now. So if these things don't concern you, then what the hell? Where, where, where the place are you going to stay? Yeah? Think about it. So number one, okay, the rise in property may not be beneficial or it's on paper. 
but because you sell your house, you need to own. I mean, you need to buy another one, right? Yeah. Or unless your plan is live in the streets or, or rent forever, yeah. Of course, that's an adoption. I wouldn't say that that is not fair. All right. So, I don't really try and give unfair criticism of the government or whatever. I try to give fair and measured balance. Yeah. Everyone needs to be fair, and everyone needs to to to, to know how to go on living at this next stage of their life. You know stuff like that yeah it's, it's a practicality it's bread and butter issues for singaporeans that is what i'm talking about right i'm not aiming anyone or doing anything but these are things that we singaporeans we are facing the heat on the streets we need to know what to do about the next step yeah so now the SIRS. okay now why the SIRS issue in amokyo was uh, was an interesting example i'm not criticizing but i'm just saying that okay uh there was a few financial calculations that worked out especially one of them was about 180 plus, 189,000, something like that to top up the certain deficits, yeah? So, well, okay, while you're young, that's okay, that's okay. I mean, nobody begrudges you when you take on a second loan or, you know, improve to a 99-year uh, tenure. There's nothing about it, right? There's absolutely nothing about it. But, but, the moment you hit 65 years old, and most of these people are, who are they going to get the money from to top up the loan? Are they going to cash, come up cash in hand, like you, or you? Are they going to come cash in hand? That's a big problem. No, no, we're not protesting. We are just uh, uh, looking at things in a measured way. So who's going to lend a loan? I mean, seriously. Is it going to be the banks that will lend you after 65? Now, who who, who, who has a loan extended to them after 65? Huh? It's a show of hands. Okay, none, right? None that's 65 and above actually has a loan extended to them, right? For housing loan, right? Why? It's because after 65, the tenure to pay the loan will be uh, dramatically shortened, like, right? Potential tenure. And, and basically, unless you have enough collateral or security to do so, in which case, you don't need to borrow from the bank, right? Otherwise, the bank will lend you. Because if, let's say, the person passes away during the... the thing, or unable to fulfill their obligations due to age and lesser job opportunities, then the bank will be stuck, right? Yes. So, so these are things that we need to think about, right? And... and, and, and and SIRS uh, alone, right, from its very definition, right, actually is a scheme that the government, you know, takes back the housing for, for, for you, know, uh, you know, early buyback kind of thing, like, right? And so it's called selective and block uh, replacement scheme, like, yeah? So, which is why, which is why we need to have these considerations, okay? I know there are many previous SIRS before, no issues, right? There are previous SIRS before, you don't have to top up. So, why can't we follow that principle, right? Where, where PV actually suggests that, okay, number one, on, on matter of principle, we do not ask these people to top up, you know, at least give them a one-for-one -one replacement. Even it may not be an apple for orange, at least better than having to top up when these people are cash-strapped. They have paid, some of them have paid off their housing, right, paid off their housing. So it's like, where do you want them to live? They're actually expected to stay there until they die. There are other emotional attachments, but let's say that, okay, never mind, they accept it in the shift, correct? But... The essence of it is that should a person be asked to top up if they have been selected for SIRS and it's not their, their, their option, you know, yeah? So, so uh, and then offering them a 50-year leash is a half measure because there will be discrepancies, okay, let's say for example, a 50-year and a 99-year, you ran out, right? So who's getting the, the, let's say they ran out for the same value, so who's getting the better uh, deal, end of the deal? So this will have an impact on the other 99-year leashes. So while this is a half solution, uh, this is the essentially has other implications as well, all right? And it's compact. All right, so basically, let me ask you again, okay? Back to you, okay? HDB created uh, uh, this public housing, all right, for one purpose, okay? So that everyone has a house in its original purpose. Whereas, along the way, somehow it got to become an appreciating asset, right? Appreciating. But remember, no, every time you say appreciating asset, right? You sell your house, do you need to buy a new one? Yes and the housing prices are on an appreciating end. So what we need actually is a steady controlled growth of housing, right, which uh, PV has actually an eye to look into, right? Steady controlled growth instead of creating huge bursts of growth and which may suddenly collapse, right? This, this will lead to uh, people are being unable to service their loans on some ends, which is quite bad, all right? Rather, we want a more stable growth of real estate, which is more, uh, what do you call, a housing rather than an uh, investment asset to begin with, like, yeah? Because all of you want a house at the end of the day, right? You don't, you don't want an investment that go, you know, up in one moment, yeah? That, that, that would leave you very unsettled because the bank, sometimes when it goes down, you need to top up. It's true. You know, some of the conditions in the say, hey, if it falls below this value, you, you have to top up, right? And, and, and you know, that will be a negative equity charge. Okay, to put it in simple terms, uh, okay, if that happens, uh, 
you have to pay money, yeah? And you're already suffering. So, so we try to reduce that suffering on that level, all right? So, so that you guys can have a better thing. But again, uh, we don't decide the policy here. I mean, we just can only speak our mind, advise plainly, yeah? And basically see the situation for what it is. That is why you are here. You are here to listen to our views so that you can have a better sense as well as a better idea how to get out of this, uh, some, some of these property traps that you are in. Okay, like for example, you now you know that perennially increasing property prices may not be to your advantage, all right? On paper, yes, but you will buy the next house, yeah? All right, so these are some of the considerations and basically, um, um, if you force someone to move, at least it, it has to be on some equitable level. In other words, you shouldn't have to be forced to top up the money for it, right? Yeah, you can get a bit further away from Amokyo. Nobody's complaining, right? But I mean, I mean, yeah, there's some there, 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 there's some people who prefer to live nearer to the MRT and so on and so forth. Lah. But yeah, but uh, it was something that has been decided long time ago. So if you want to change, you have to make up your mind to change, right? Uh, we can't help you, yeah? Essentially, it's a people's choice, all right? And um, for myself, I've advocated that not only the, the I mean, other than materials costs, the rest should not be charged to the people at land costs so and so forth, lah, right? And uh, things like MOP, okay, in principle should be scrapped, all right? CPF, if they charge you CPF, should you need to return with interest, knowing that at first they sold you the flat, okay, they sold you the flat, right? Uh, theoretically, and if they did so, then why should you be returning CPF with interest, yeah? Yeah? And also, uh, maybe we're looking at if, if possible tenureship of the HDB can be extended, lah, right? Because after all, it's an asset that was sold with land costs. You want to defray the land costs or, or extend the tenure? I, I think both are acceptable uh, possible solutions. At least you need something to your descendants, yeah? So, so there's a, some things. There's called permanency. There's a sense of homeness. There's a sense of reality, right, that we need to bring back to Singapore, right, to the housing scene. Because this house is belongs to so-called it was sold to you so it supposedly belongs to you right but although we all know it's a tenancy contract like yeah you you can read like yeah okay so basically there are things right that you need to know and uh, you need a house you need a house in order you don't want people to force you out of the house and ask you to prop up that is i think on the surface of it it sounds uh, uh not so well to you like, although financially it may be balanced right but i think it's still not a fair deal for the people like, yeah so we need to get a better deal we need to get a better Okay, so that's what I'm saying. Okay, uh, any of you who don't get what I'm saying, all right, can kind of look over me after that. I will try and give you some explanation. But if every of you, every one of you gets a sense of what I'm saying, right, then, then I suppose it's time that we, we need to look at uh, possible changes or things we can maybe, you know, help this government along or form the next one or, you know, whatever, like just get more representation in your voice. I believe that would help change a bit of things, like, yeah. Uh, after all, we are all actually voicing out for the people, like, right? People like us, we are common people. All of us are, even civil servants, all are affected by these policies, right? Whether be it army officers, policemen, civil servants, I mean, I, I think we take a reason and standpoint to it that there is nothing wrong, yeah? There's nothing wrong to it. So I hope all of you give a due point and consideration to this, right? And uh, I hope wish everybody, uh, all the best of you for, for the next uh, one, two years, right? And I hope you get a fairer deal on HDB, all right? Ken? Okay? Can, huh? Alright, okay. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you very much.